Hey, greetings everyone. Daniel Lowry with Anti-Siphon Training and we're back with yet another episode in our Networking Fundamentals series. Been tons of fun so far. Hopefully we can keep those uh, good times a-rolling with today's episode, which is all about email. Well, at least I say it is all about email, but it's not going to be like, here's how to set up your email and here's how to get your client to work. And no, 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 no. This is more like all the stuff that's happening behind the scenes, at least at a fundamental level, right? Because this is Networking Fundamentals. And guess what? Your email requires a network for everything to work. And there are protocols and ports that are being used and security and all sorts of fun stuff that's happening on the back end so that you can open your inbox, look at email, enjoy the contents therein. Okay. So I've made an infographic to help us out with this. This will kind of be our guide for today. And here we go. The unseen network. Behind your email, every day over 370 billion emails are sent and received. This is the story of a complex system and protocols and services that make each one possible. All right, so a lot of fun here. The three pillars of email communication. This is going to be the protocols that typically we use to make email go from our clients to the server and from the server to the client. And then you can get one of or many of those other emails that we get. Most of it's spam. I didn't make it. You know, I, it's that's not, you can't blame me for that. Email's nice, spam not so much, but what are you going to do, right? If you want all the fun stuff, you got to deal with all the, uh, well, the things in the punch bowl, if you know what I'm talking about. All right, so let's get back to it. So we're going to start off with our friend SMTP or the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. This is... Like it says, it's the backbone. It is the standard for sending and receiving email. Well, we, we send email through SMTB, the simple mail transfer, right? It's transferring mail. And most of the time, that's exactly what we're working with here is a uh, an SMTP server. Typically, well, back in the day, it was typically running under port 25, as we can see that here. But that is insecure. That is a clear text protocol for sending these emails. It says that port 25 is the legacy port for server-to-server -server SMTP and historically client-to-server, okay? It often lacks encryption and authentication, making data vulnerable to interception. That said, it doesn't mean it's gone. It doesn't mean it doesn't get used. It just means that you have to be aware that that is the kind of thing. It's on port 25, and it is the protocol for sending and receiving mail between server-to-server -server and sometimes client-to-server as well. More fashionably, nowadays, we have the secure SMTP on port 587 using TLS for encryption. We like encryption. This is the modern secure way to send email. That's right. No longer are we using old and busted SMTP. And I'll show you a little bit of playing around with that here in just a second. You have this start TLS that encrypts the communications, protecting uh, credentials, and message content during transit, authentication is typically required. And I, I don't have a secure SMTP server up and running, but I do have in my home lab, let's jump over here. I have a server that is running old port 25 SMTP, right? So if I just use the Telnet's utility, which is in most modern operating systems, and I give it the IP address of the, well, offending service, which I believe is 1.104. I feel like that's right. And then give it the port of 25. Trying, I'm, I probably have the wrong IP address. I wrote it down. What, what was that? What, was, oh, yes, <laughs> I did write the wrong. It's 56. 56. <laughs> Daniel, you crazy kook. There we go. And now we're in, right? It's, it's saying, hey, you've got stuff. And if you know some of the commands that it runs, like EHLO, an H-E-L-O, and like mail from, and I give it a colon, and I can tell it I'm from anybody I want. If I want to say this is from bill.gates at, you know, our, if I want to stay with, <laughs> you know, our, our specific company. So maybe I'm going to pretend I'm john.strand at anti-siphon-training.com, which that's not his email address, but... Guess what? Tells me okay, right? This is all insecure. 
Then I can say RCPT2, and I can tell it where I want it to go. And I believe that, you know, I can just use the root user. There you go. Email, fun. Then I tell it data, fire off. It tells me, write my message. Hi, this is John Strand. Boom. <laughs> Send money. No, he doesn't like that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> he would never ask for that. He would say, here are some great resources for you. Bing, bing, bing. And then when I'm done, I just put a period on a single line and it sends it off and I'm done. I can do quit. But that's it. Guess what? I just logged into the server. I gave the server some commands and the server now is going to send that email to that user because it does know of that user and it's off to the races. And that's why we don't really like uh, the insecure SMTP anymore, but it is the thing, right? A little fun to play around with though, especially in a lab environment. Don't do that, by the way. Don't do that on sale. We look kicking around looking for SMTP servers and logging in and sending fake emails. No, that's not what we're doing here. I'm just showing you why that's an insecure thing. I, I take no responsibility for any of you out there to do the wrong thing. <laughs> All right, let's get back in here because now it's time to jump to our next protocol, which is very, very popular, which is IMAP, the Internet Message Access Protocol. IMAP allows email clients to access and manage messages directly on a mail server. So you've got your, your messages, they're on the server. I can use my client to access and work with them directly through the client. It keeps mail synchronized across multiple devices, which is ideal for users who access email from various locations. So if you like being able to log into things like Gmail from your laptop and your phone, and so the IMAP is most likely the protocol that is being used. You get lovely things like authentication. We also have SSL, encryption, all sorts of fun stuff. So let's take a look at those things. Right Here's the secure version of IMAP, which is on port 993 and does use SSL. Where we saw up here, this is using TLS. A little bit of difference, very similar protocols, but just a little bit of difference. So IMAP S, right, or IMAP over SSL TLS, encrypts the entire session from connection establishment. During that, all data, including login credentials and e email content remains private. Yay, we like that, right? Because these plain text protocols, like over here with insecure IMAP on port 143, is sent in plain text. Any attacker that has the ability to capture those packets would then be able to read your email. If you put any sensitive information in it, that's going right into their pocket. And that's what we do not want. That's why we like encrypted protocols versus plain text protocols. Those are, those are not what, the way we roll. But I just wanted you to be aware of them, right? And then, of course, last but not least, we have POP3, the Post Office Protocol 3. POP3 is a simpler protocol designed for retrieving emails from a server uh, to a single local device. It typically downloads messages and then removes them from the server, making it suitable for offline access on one machine. I don't see POP3 being used as often. I, I most likely am seeing IMAP, but POP3 is still out there. It is a usable protocol. We do have a secure version of it here with secure POP3 over SSL, and that is port 995 versus insecure POP3, which is port 110110. We get encrypted communication for downloading emails, secures your credentials and the messages from eavesdropping. Whereas over here, port 110 means data, including your username and password in the entire mail body. Email body is transferred. That's a fun slip <laughs> is transmitted unencrypted posing to uh, I'm part. I'm sorry, posing a significant risk to security. And then let's just take a look at this journey across the email. So this is how an email works. This is a, like you send using your mail user agent or MUA, which is your clients. So Outlook, right? If you're running Thunderbird or whatever, you have your client. It sends the email via SMTP. Cool. Your server, the MTA, the mail transfer agent, it finds the recipient using DNS MX, which is actually kind of a cool thing. 
You can take a look at that. So if I do NS lookup, look up like that, and I say set type equals MX, and then I give it a domain name like anti siphon training.com, it'll show me that anti siphon training.com's mail exchanger is mail.protection.outlook.com. So that means that we are using Outlook or Microsoft Office 365 for our email. And that's that's just a cool way to kind of figure that stuff out. But that's that's what's going on under the hood with your MTA. It finds the recipient server using DNS with the MX record. The recipient server or the MTA accepts the email via SMTP, and then the recipient reads it using the MUA or the client which fetches the email via IMAP or POP3. It's very simple, right? This is not rocket science, but it is kind of good to know how is that email traversing across the interwebs, across these networks? How is it making its lovely little way from one person who types it to the server and then from the server to my inbox or your inbox? It's just nice to know how that, how that works. And we can see the pro. Uh, I, I thought this was an interesting little study I did here. Email client protocol dominance. So you've got IMAP, which is in purple, right? So I click on that. You can see its uses is 85%. POP3 is 10%. And then other is five. So definitely IMAP is, is winning the race here, right? And then there's some email security as far as well, we also have some other security things, which we'll get into probably more in a security section, but just kind of bringing it up here where we have SPF for the sender policy framework. And this cool, this is a really great thing. A lot of people are using this nowadays and for good reason. This verifies that sending, uh, sending mail servers are authorized by that domain. DKIM are the domain keys identified mail. This adds digital signatures to verify the sender and ensure that the message wasn't altered. No change of We like to keep it the way it was when it was sent. DMARC are the domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance. This tells receiving servers what to do with emails that fail SPF or DKIM checks. And of course, as we've seen, we're using TLS and SSL throughout for encryption and security. So hopefully that was useful information to you. Hopefully you now understand a little more about how SMTP and IMAP and POP3 and just email in general works using the network to send that information into our inboxes so that we might enjoy letters from Nigerian princes and <laughs> spammers and scammers and every now and then business stuff or a letter from grandma fun. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, you know what to do. Give that like and subscribe to the Anti-Siphon Training channel. We would love to have you. And then hit the notification bell so that you know when new episodes and new videos are dropped via that channel. We also have a great Discord community. We would love to see you there. Check us out on LinkedIn as well. Leave us a comment. We'd love to engage with you. We we'll always have a lot of resources that are available for you. Pay what you can, pay for what you can. Lots of workshops, summits, you name it. Tons of stuff. Go to poweredbybhs.com. Powered That's a fun thing to say. And then you can see everything that we've got coming up in the future. So it's a really great resource for you. Go check that out. That's it. I'm going to call it a day. Thanks for watching. And until the next episode, have a great day.